Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Fear Free Passive Investing. My name is Lucas Miller, host of this show and host of the YouTube channel, Fear Free Passive Investing. Today is Friday, February 7th, so you know what time it is. Time for Friday Five. All right, so today's Friday Five comes as a response to uh, President Donald Trump's State of the Union address that he gave uh, last Tuesday. Um, President Trump delivered his third State of the Union address, and I know there's a bunch of people out there that are just saying, like, I hate it. I don't care. Nobody, nobody watched it. Nobody listened. Um, well, believe it or not, uh, federal legislative policy does impact what we do here. Uh, it impacts the real estate sector. It imp impacts businesses. It impacts everyday life. So somebody has to pay attention to that. So uh, I'm doing that for you. I'm gonna synthesize his whole speech down to a couple different points and let you know what you need to think about for real estate policy. So let's get started. Okay, so the speech came um, a day before the Senate acquitted him for any impeachment wrongdoing, which is interesting because he didn't actually uh, mention the imp impeachment proceedings at all. Um, that shocked a lot of people, including myself. I assume that would be a major staple of the speech, but it wasn't. So that was just kind of interesting. But for those who didn't watch or, or just don't care to watch, um, I want to summarize the speech with regards to real estate investing and business um, just into a couple little points. So this isn't a reflection of politics, but instead just a chance for me to inform you about real estate policy because it's something I watched. It's, it's actually pretty important. So there... Um, and for if you don't know, the State of the Union Address is traditionally where administrations are able to either tout successes or lay out plans for future policy or future ideas for policy. So it's important to listen to in that regard. There were two main areas of the speech that I think are relevant for us. First, President Trump painted the picture of a very healthy economy. Um, from a macro perspective, this is really critical. Um, he stated that he created 7 million new jobs, um, 5 million more than the government experts predicted. Uh, the unemployment rate is the lowest in over half a century. Investor confidence is high. Uh, new companies and jobs are moving to the U.S. Manufacturing, industrial, petroleum production that are, are at an all-time high. Um, and President Trump labeled this a blue collar boom. Now, whether you agree with um, whether that's actually happening or not, uh, that's for you to debate, not me. What I will say is that these points are very important if you wanna have a healthy investing economy. Um, all of these things are really critical to make quality investments. And these are things that will help out any potential deal that you are invested in. So. Um, if these things are true, I think it's a phenomenal thing. Um, whether they are actually happening or not, that's, again, up to other people to debate, not me. Second, um, the only really housing-related topic that President Trump mentioned was opportunity zones. Uh, specifically, he mentioned that uh, the jobs and investments are pouring into 9,000 previously neglected neighborhoods, thanks to quality opportunity zones, uh, qualified opportunity zones, excuse me. Senator Tim Scott um, actually got a special shout out for spearheading the project. He was in the audience and that was kind of cool. Um, he stated that wealthy people and investors and companies are pouring money into these poor neighborhoods um, where a lot of them haven't seen an investment in many decades, including jobs and energy and excitement. Um, as the tradition has been for many presidents to invite guests, to attend the speech, um, this sort of highlights and focuses um, big wins and puts a personal face to it. Um, President Trump was no different. One of his guests was Army veteran Tony Rankins from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, Tony struggled with drug addiction. He lost his job. He lost his family. It was a terrible situation. Uh, he was even homeless. But then he found um, a job with a construction company that focuses on these uh, qualified or yeah qualified opportunity zones. And now he's like this top tradesman, he's drug free, he got his family back. So um, it's always fun to hear about like success stories and um, how you're putting a personal face on this, which I think is really cool. Um, <clears throat> but really those were the only specific relevant points for our purposes here. If you do wanna watch the speech or read the transcript, 
There will be links to both down in the description. So whether you're watching on YouTube, it'll be down in the description, or if you're listening on the podcast, it'll be um, in the app, wherever you're listening, there will be a link to it. So, you know, many political pundits on both sides of the aisle said this was an incredibly powerful speech and um, the, coming from a very embattled president. And I have to say, as a former Politico, I've seen quite a few State of the Union speeches. Um, I've been, you know, in DC when they were being given. And this was honestly the best speech I have ever seen by far. Again, that's not a political statement by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it's important to note that investor confidence is going to be soaring after seeing this speech. So um, just something to take into account but it does point to a very tough road to unseat him for the 2020 elections. Um, that's all I've got for today. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful Friday, and I can't wait to talk to you next week. See you later.